All right, today we're looking at a walk-in freezer that's freezing up, and we got a coil here. It's all beat to heck. So we're uh, testing out our clock, which can't tell for certain if it's moving yet. Also got a leak going on. All right, so we pumped it down, took it down to zero, maybe a pound or two above it, and uh, rebrazed that suction line. Left it vented a little bit just to in case any pressure build up. Got that there. Uh, right now we're just straightening out these fins, which is a good time. It uh, this is at a so the kids are around it quite a bit. And so we're just kind of going through patiently trying to straighten these out as best as possible because it hasn't been done for ever. And that's the original compressor. I thought that was a replacement, but it's an O3 compressor. So it looks like a uh, malfunction of a brace joint from the factory. I was able to suck it into the pockets of both the compressor and one on the elbow there. Uh, no leaks found on the um, pressure switch. I've got the clock, like I said, marked, and I believe it's tracking. Yep. Yeah, it's tracking. You see the blue mark there? They had shut this off for me before I got here, but it's definitely low, so I'm thinking it's probably never heating, hitting uh, temperature. And it's just run, 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 run. So we're going to wash this thing out once we get done. Probably go ahead and chemically clean it because it definitely is a, is a mess. It's got to, it's it's crammed down into those fins, and you can't see nothing when you look at it from the back side. Coming through this way here, you can't see squat. I just now had a chance to look closer at this defrost clock, but a little bit whopper jaw there, and like he said, time was off. May not do you a whole lot of good, so we're gonna even those out. May actually take it to three instead of the two. They um, had. Uh, they had an evaporate or a uh, walk-in cooler before this, and that's going to get a lot of the humidity out prior to any of the issues they got going on. But probably going to switch it to that. And they got the timer set pretty high too. I don't know if the defrost termination is working properly either. But it sounds to me just basically accumulated, and between that and the refrigerant being low, so we've kind of gotten some progress going on here with this. You can kind of see that they're a little mangoided. Using the uh, my Robin airbrush, I think it is. It's got multiple different uh, heads on it. So we're gonna run some chemical cleaner in it first and kind of see what we got going on. This is only like two layers thick. Uh, I'd rather have a gap than no gap. That way, at least got some air going through the copper. I did do a little something new to my breathing bag here. I ended up putting a washer in there and a rivet. So that allows me to zip that thing open and everything right there on the bag. I was watching, um, I forget the channel. I was watching one of the other channels and they were talking about putting magnets on the back of this to put it up against your uh, shelving in your truck so it won't fall over instead of using a bungee strap. You might consider doing that. I'll put the link for that channel uh, on the display so you can find that uh, information. But yeah, when uh, you got both hands, it's not so bad. You can. Uh, so unfortunately, I don't have the fancy uh, Viper stuff. All I've got is New Bright. Got the yellow there for my evaporators. Got big blue. Well, not even got big blue. We're all new Calgon here, unfortunately. comes in, goes across and goes over to there. Got a little one here. This one 
here. Cold. Definitely cold. Everything's crammed. Coils were clean. I checked those earlier. Yep. So we've got super heat issues here, or at least we thought we did. At 26, 27 degrees, let's see if this comes out to being. You gotta remember, anything below 32 is gonna freeze. I think this TXV's got issues. We're on 404. 28 degrees, we're at negative 18. So yeah, we're getting a better look here at this. So we're running 28 degree, you want a minimum of 20 back at the compressor, according to Copeland. We've got a negative 20 evaporator temperature, 8 degree suction line temperature. It's 70 degrees or better inside, so it's gonna sit there and freeze up. So, yep, the insulation's too thin. So, we went ahead and put it into defrost. I'm sitting looking at the defrost heater. It's sticking out of the side there for some reason. <clears throat> really ain't got nothing growing on the evaporator, but we definitely got something going on here at this TXV area. I've not gotten good explanation of what the whole problem was since the beginning. So, what we fixed so far has needed to be done but wasn't the initial reason honestly most of the reason of what's going on is whoever installed this used too thin of insulation how this is just now starting to become an issue this has been installed since 2003 um you know it's like come on how'd this just start so you really don't know what to think when you don't get good information so we finally got it melted out there with water there's a port there, so I should be able to check superheat. I don't think superheat's our issue. Like I said, this insulation's an issue. All right, so basically we made some adjustments to the superheat for this freezer. It was running way up there in the high 20s, almost 30s area. Right now, as you see, we're running 7.2. It's fluctuating down to mid sixes, back up to nine. Our box temperature, now the head pressure obviously is not hooked up. We're running right around 11. Which we've been keeping the door open, so we got it all adjusted. Got my suction port there, got my uh, suction line over there, so just a foot away. And it's a little bit better being right on the coil. Uh, we took that defrost out. We're uh, just going to have the two spaced out every 12 hours. Um, you can see it's feeding a lot better than what it was. We got all that out. There was a little piece in that fan motor there, we got that fixed. So um, it's looking a lot better than what it was by far. I think we're going to go ahead and leave it alone. So we're running a 31 degree superheat. We're not frosting up like we were earlier. In theory, I mean, it was starving it. Check our sight glass, make sure we're still full. We are. So sometimes that'll change on you after you get the uh, charge sex. Now it's letting more through the coil. So got our clock back to every 12 hours. We'll go ahead and get that set, which we're 2 for 30. Good. And it'll go into a defrost, which will make up for us having that door open so much. We'll do that here shortly. Do it for about 32 minutes area. I think that's gonna be fine. All right, so she's satisfied and she's ready to go. The timer's set up. The coil looks a lot better than what it did. You can actually see some stuff getting through it. We've got the superheat set correctly. We were good out here on the superheat, because like I said, you're supposed to maintain that uh, minimum of 20, according to Copeland. Uh, we got that. Um, the line's not running as cold. Um, so we're, we're maybe going to fix this issue. Uh, it's not, you know, still ain't the right insulation. But um, I told him, save your money. Uh, check it out. Make sure that it's uh, freezing up still. And if it, uh, if it does, fine. We'll have the insulators come out and do it. Um, and then otherwise everything's a lot better than what it was. We got a leak repaired, we got the superheat set right, coil cleaned, the coil straightened, 
and uh, everything's working pretty good. And we got that ice off the end of the coil. So that's going to wrap it up, guys. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to check out our Facebook page, HVACR Survival. And uh, we're also going on Instagram. Don't forget to give it a big thumbs up. We'll catch you on the next one.